If you happen to have a copy of the authorized version of the scriptures, I would invite you to go ahead and get your copy of the authorized version of the scriptures and read along with me at some of the scriptures we are going to be looking at today. Read along with me word for word at the scriptures we will be reading today. Read along with me, be a Berean, search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. If we're reading and you have a question about the context, pause the video and search the context on your own. Read along with me because you'll discover that sometimes my mouth will go quicker than my brain. Okay, so read along with me. Romans chapter 6, verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto unrighteousness? Hmm. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants, servants have a choice, slaves don't. You're not reading the scriptures. It says slaves there, don't you? Doesn't it? Excuse me. Servants have a choice. Slaves don't. Okay? Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 12 on to verse 13. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meats for the belly, and the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. And then we go back to Romans chapter 6 again, verses 19 on verse 23. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. And for as... Ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity. Even so now, yield your members' servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, choosing. It's that thing about free will again. Ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then? In those things whereof ye are now ashamed, for the end of those things is death. And now be made free from sin, and become servants to God, if you are a saved man, a woman, a saint, okay? Ye have your fruit unto holiness, and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6. I want to read these with you and then we're going to speak on them a little bit. Because I want to get these verses out there into your ears. Proverbs 6, 25 on verse 28. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. This is a whorish woman. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Okay, lusting after the things of the devil, lusting after the things of Rome, lusting after sin. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned? Proverbs 7, verses 21 on to 23. 
with her much fair speech. She caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goeth after her straightway, as an ox goeth to the slaughter, or as a fool to the correction of the stocks, till a dart strike through his liver. Interesting, it says liver, for what we're going to be talking about, basing what we're going to be talking about. As a bird hasteth to the snare, and it knoweth not that it is for his life. I have this I take a lot of time to witness on the homeless people to speak with them to sit there and to listen to them I I I I have an affection for the homeless because one 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 step away from being there myself I've always always had that in my mind and heart but now as a saved man of course for over 15 years it's it's even greater it's even greater and there are many homeless people out there many many homeless people out there and there are those out there who are homeless because of horrendous decisions absolutely but that is not the case for all of them some of them just had a bad rap. Some of them, they just, you know, they lost their job. They were doing what they were supposed to do. They lost their job. They couldn't get one. And then the rug pulled out from under them. Next thing you know, they're sleeping in their, a car under a bridge or something. Okay. And with inflation as it is right now, you know, to especially here in Illinois, where cheap here in Illinois for rent is uh, like a studio apartment five stories up that costs almost a grand. Okay? Unfortunately, the numbers prove and show that, yes, the majority of homeless are there because of their own mistakes. Yes, that is the truth, but that is not all the truth. That is not everyone. And the whole shouldn't be, you know, everyone shouldn't be frowned upon. Because when you see a uh, homeless bum get a job, what if you can't? You know, health insurance is so outrageous. <laughs> and when you get on this government stuff, they want you to get on a, a health plan and pay them money and stuff like that. What if they can't? What if they're doing all they can, but yet they still can't get anywhere? So what happens with a lot of the homeless? They turn to drugs. They turn to alcohol. And they become addicts. This is, this is, a, this is a scientific, demonstrable, and provable. Numerically, the statistics do not lie. Okay, they, they, the Jesuits say that mental illness runs runs rampant among the homeless. I will tell you, devil possession, because when you are an addict and drinking yourself into a drunken, slobbering stupor every day. Oh, all the doors and windows are open for devils to come in. I've experienced this recently with some of the homeless. Okay? I've experienced this recently. And the scriptures that we have looked at, I want you to think about in context of addiction. You might be saying, well, Brad, what about the... Well, okay, okay, listen. Think about this. Okay? There is good and bad addictions. Okay? Let's talk about this. For example, let's look at the obvious. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Verses 13 on to verse 16. Verses 13 on to verse 16. I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanus, 
that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints, that ye submit yourselves unto such, and to everyone that helpeth with us and laboreth. Okay? There are good addictions. And there are evil addictions. For example, <laughs> I'm addicted to breathing. How about you? I'm addicted to walking. You know there are people out there that can't walk? I'm addicted to reading the scriptures every day. I'm addicted to witnessing, to speaking to people, to ministering, okay? I'm addicted to prayer, okay? I'm addicted to singing hymns when I can, if I can, okay? But what happens? Deuteronomy chapter 13. Deuteronomy chapter 13. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 1 and verse 5. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder. Now think about this. Yes, this is talking about, you know, faith and whatnot, but I want you to think about this in a context of addiction. You and I, man, was made to worship something for idolatry. And what, usually, what happens is most of mankind will worship themselves as their own God. Okay? And hence, that's why the world is the way it is. But see, when you are worshiping yourself, you are on Satan's territory. And he comes along when problems come along instead of going to the Lord. Hey, have a, have a couple of beers. A little won't hurt. Hey, you're fretting? Why don't you smoke that cigarette? Hmm? Hey, you're lonely? Why, why don't you go ahead and uh, look at a little porn? A little doesn't hurt. Hmm? Hmm? See, if you're not saved, your father is the devil. And mankind has been given free will to choose. And unfortunately, Mankind usually chooses himself over God. So, if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and that sign or wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Well, I know myself, do you? Well, I trust in my heart. You're a fool if you trust in your heart. Today is the 28th. Okay, have you read the 28th proverb today? He who trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whosoever trusteth in, uh, trusteth in the Lord shall be safe. I just bradized that. Excuse me. Okay? You don't even know your own heart. But yet you do. Because your heart wants to discover itself, right? Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. See, God knows the beginning from the end. He's outside of our time. He knows what's going to happen at uh, 1020, at 1030. It's 1029 right now. He knows what's going to happen at 1030. We don't. But see, he will allow things like this so he can show you your own condition. And a lot of people don't like that. And when people don't like to, when they get a glimpse of what they are, like Moses said, you know, let me not see my own wretchedness. And how do people hide that? Oh, by boasting up themselves. I am my own God. Or they put a mask on it and they go to an addiction. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death 
because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage, to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. Drink, have a couple of beers. You, you, you need to chill, right? You need to chill out. Life is sad. Go ahead and get drunk. Life is stressful right now. Light up a cigarette or do a vape. Well, I like it. <laughs> There's this homeless individual who I've had the opportunity to... Um, to witness to, to talk to, listen to, and I've seen him a couple times sober, but um, and it's always it's like a record. I lost my family, my children because of drink. He he's Hispanic, and this man is every day, not every time I've seen him, but every day, every you know because I go on walks in the evening and whatnot. Um, he's drunk. Slobbering, slobbering, you know, at a picnic table, sl drooling, slobbering drunk. <laughs> and it's, it's pathetic. It's sad. But see, many out there say when it comes to addiction that, well, you are powerless to fight it. And that is true to an extent. But see, you, you have to make the right choice. Listen to me. If you want not to be addicted to that evil thing, whatever it is, if you want not to be addicted to it, and you go to the Lord for that help, He will help you. But if you don't truly want it, well, all the while, I don't want to do this. I call you a liar. I call you a liar. Because if you really wanted to quit, well, I don't have it in me. You're right. But see, God's not holding a gun to your head. You've got to make the right choice. And about drinking, about drinking, Proverbs 20, Proverbs 20, sad to see a grown man drooling, incoherent, because he's drunk, it's, it's, it's pathetic. But see, Scripture is not against the use of alcohol. It isn't. Proverbs 20, first warning. Wine is a mocker. This is the warning against it. Strong drink is raging. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Proverbs 23, verses 29 on to the close. Solomon talking about getting drunk. Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? I've gotten drunk before, unfortunately. And what happens? When you get drunk, you get... Oh, woe is me. Who hath sorrow? Filled with sorrow? Who hath contentions? Don't you feel like being a little put up your dukes in a drunken stupor, right? Feel combative? Mm -hmm. Who hath babblings can't even speak? Who hath wounds without cause? Getting drunk and then you fall over and then you wake up with the hangover and you're like, where'd these scratches come from? Who hath redness of eyes? Self-explanatory. 
They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine, look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. At the last, at the last, it biteth like a serpent. See? And stingeth like an adder. She go after him straightway till a dart strike through his liver with her much fair speech she caused him to yield you're, you're feeling down drink a couple beers hey you're fretting go ahead and smoke a cigarette hey you're fretting smoke a little grass do, do, do a line of cocaine, drop some acid, eat some mushrooms. Yeah, go ahead, not to steal a Jesuit punyard, but go ahead and do a little PCP or heroin. Huh? Just need a little boost, right? It's all good. I can quit when I want. Do you want to? I wish I could quit. Do you want to quit? Yes. Do you truly want to quit? Yes, then how come I keep seeing you every day? I can't. Do you know who the Lord is? And see, if someone truly wants that freedom, that liberty, if they truly want it, offer Christ to them. Be that witness that ambassador of Christ, we beseech you in God's stead, be ye reconciled, uh, we beseech you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. But at the end of the day, do they really want it? Hmm. Verse 33. Thine eye shall behold strange women, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. The term is beer goggles. You get drunk enough. Almost anything looks appealing in a sexual way, doesn't it? Yay! Thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea, or as he that lieth upon the top of the mast. The spins. You get so drunk that you lie down on your bed and the room is spinning. You close your eyes and the room is spinning. You're so drunk that, you know, when you get that intoxicated and things are spinning, you can't lift up your head and things are spinning. Uh, those are signs of uh, alcohol poisoning. Those are the beginnings of poisoning. Verse 35. They have stricken me, thou shalt say. They have. And I was not sick. They have beaten me. And I felt it not. Someone else's fault. When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. I lost my family because of drinking. So, okay, you lost your family because you're getting drunk all the time. Okay, all right, but why are you drinking? Because something happened in your life that you don't want to deal with and you don't want to go to the Lord with? Hmm? See, you will use something else to justify the addiction. There's something it's full of wonder when you encounter a grown man, your own age, I'm 49 years of age, so inebriated 
that they're drooling like a little baby. That talk and that you can tell, you know, and that you could, you know, if you had a match because of the stench of booze, that if you were to light a match, you were afraid that you'd blow up. They, they have stricken me. Do you realize that a lot of these people who are trapped in addiction in some way or another resort back to, well, the woman thou gavest to be with me, she did give me the tree and I did eat. If you hadn't have done this, I wouldn't have done that. If things weren't the way they were, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Ephesians 5, though. But now, now, here's the thing. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Ephesians chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 21. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Spirit, capital S, the Lord. There are people out there, beg your pardon, every once in a while, like my wife, she'll make a big old, we make a, she make a big old pot of spaghetti, right? With the meat and the onions, and she puts the pet, never mind. But she'll make a big thing of spaghetti, okay? Pasta, gotta love the pasta, right? Give me, a, give me a good glass of red wine. Helps digestion. There is scientific evidence that suggests that a glass of red wine coupled with coca, chocolate, that is 85% at least coca, is very good for high blood pressure. Okay? Every once in a blue moon, I myself, I'll drink a glass of wine. There's nothing wrong with having like a glass of wine. But here's the thing. I can have a glass of wine. Be like, that's it. I can have a glass of wine with the, the spaghetti or with a meal. That's it. I can have a glass of wine with, a, with a, one of those bark of the uh, dark chocolate. Make sure it's over 85% coca. That way you, you get the uh, municipal properties of it. Okay, anything else is just, you know, poison. But, you know, dark coca, dark chocolate, above 85%. You, you look that up on your own time about the high blood pressure thing, okay? Drink a glass of wine, put a little with <clears throat> dark chocolate, drink it, done. Let's see, there are those out there who can't do that. Because they just keep going and going and going. And I'll confess... I've been, uh, there have been times where I've had a glass of wine with dinner and, uh, you know, I'll have another one. And I'll sit there and then all of a sudden I'm like, whoa, you know, whoa, wait a minute, wait, wait, okay. God has no problem using, with you using alcohol with what he created. It's the excess. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father, in the name of our, of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Okay? All right. Psalm 104, 
Psalm 104. Psalm 104. His name is Leo. The homeless man I'm referring to. He's going to die. That man's going to drink himself to death. Daily inebriation through alcohol? That guy's liver has got to be shot. I'm surprised that when I've seen him in that condition that he doesn't pisseth all over himself because his liver is shot. Guy's going to kill himself through drinking. Pray, for, please, brethren. He, he's making bad choices. Keep in prayer, Leo the homeless man. If there's any hope. But, Psalm 104, verses 13 on to verse 15. He watereth the hills from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of his works. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle. An herb for the service of man. That he may bring forth food out of the earth. Herb for the service of man. Just like marijuana. This has got me into trouble. We're at 31 minutes. This has got me into trouble with all kinds of brethren. I don't care. Okay? Using marijuana, marijuana the correct way. Eating it. You don't heat it up to activate it as it were. Okay? The health benefits to ingesting marijuana without heating it. Just eating it is incredible. The K2 vitamin that is in there and also the proven evidence that it has with cancer, of fighting cancer, and also when used correctly, ingesting, not smoking it. Okay? You don't smoke marijuana. You eat it. That's the way it was intended for the service of man. Okay? See a guy who dying of AIDS uses marijuana the correct way and it gives them appetite. Those who have uh, terminal diseases, they're going to give them pharmacaea over here. Have a brownie. Or here, just chew on that. Okay? Use it the right way in moderation. And if, of course, when speaking about marijuana, of course, you, you, you overdo it. Of course, it can make you unsober. It can get you high. But in moderation, used correctly, I, I've got, you know, people have like, oh, Brad, you're, you're, yeah, I am. I, I support that. I support if you use marijuana correctly. Correctly. You eat it in moderation. You can do the research on your own. The health benefits of ingesting marijuana where you don't get any buzz or anything like that is it's astounding. It is. It is. And I have always... People tried to, and a dear young man tried to lie on me about that before. Where it's like I was, you know, saying, smoke, no, don't smoke it. You eat it in moderation. Okay? In moderation. Just like with alcohol. Okay? Brad, you're saying God has no problem with using marijuana? Yes. He made it, didn't he? Well, not all things he made are healthy for us. That is true. There are some poisonous things out there. But remember, uh, I think it was Elisha, where they made a pot, and he's like, oh, my Lord, they're, they, they, the wild gourds, okay? They took the wild gourds, whatever they were. I think that was Elisha. They took the wild gourds, and they're like, oh, they, they were poisonous. And he's like, don't worry. Put flour in there, and it was fine, okay? You know a lot of the poison berries like the buckthorn berries and the little miniature tomato berries that are poisonous, do you realize if you cook them, you look this up, look this up on your own, okay? But you realize if you cook some of these things, the poisonous properties are diminished. 
so you can get the health benefits, okay? All right? There are certain seeds, like apple seeds. You know, you don't go out and get, grab a whole handful of apple seeds and, ah, no, that wouldn't be good. Because why? Some seeds have cyanide in them, right? But in moderation, little pieces, beneficial, okay? It's the moderation, okay? He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth. Food out of the earth. Herb so he can bring forth food out of the earth. Like I said, there have been brethren who have, like Brad, because of what you believe about, you know, marijuana, I'm, I'm not going to have felt, fine. That's fine, brother. See you up there in heaven. It's like, see you. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Okay? Whatever. Whatever. But, you know, you look at the pharmaceutical companies, okay, where God has created things more natural. Natural. But anyway, that's a, let's continue. Verse 15. And wine that maketh glad the heart of man, and oil to make his face to shine, and bread which strengtheneth men's heart. Man's heart. Bread that strengtheneth man's heart. Yeah. Yeah. You know, white bread has pretty much all its real nutrients taken out of it. You know, your rice and your wheats. You know, you can go to a store and get what is called Ezekiel bread. You can get the ingredients for what they call Ezekiel bread in Scripture. Okay? You add water to it and whatnot. You know, make it kind of an unleavened bread. You know, like a chapata or something. But yes, bread to strengthen men's heart, man's heart. Mm. And wine that maketh glad the heart of man. God is not against alcohol. God is against the excess thereof. And we are supposed to live our life in moderation, aren't we? Okay? We are. There are good addictions, and there are evil addictions. Well, well, okay, Brad. How do we, what, what do we do? Well, there are two trains here. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Remember about Alcoholics Anonymous. There are some that said that that began as a godly thing. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. But Alcoholics Anonymous, where you have a higher power, which, like I said in a previous video, could be your pen. And you look to your pen or whatever. Okay? But see, what can happen is, man, of his own, by the sheer will of his spirit, the spirit of man, out of pride, can overcome things. Absolutely. But how do they do that? Colossians 2, verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, vain deceit, vain deceit excuse me, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. And Rachman, you know, he's like, a little doesn't hurt. I've always done it. I know when to quit. That's one of the things that man did that was good. Hmm? But see, when things get a little too heavy for him, right? So, uh, Colossians chapter 2, verses 18 on verse 23. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the capital H head. And you see this with a lot of works-based salvationists and stuff like that. 
you know, well, I'm, I'm earning my salvation. <laughs> Good luck. Okay. All right. But also we can apply this in a way where someone, instead of going to the Lord through their own will, well, I got myself off the drugs. I got myself off the liquor. I, 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 me, me, me. And then what happens? I did it. If I did it, you can do it. And that's true to an extent. But who gets the glory for it? Come, come on, come on. You, we all know the answer to that, right? Come on, who gets the glory? I, 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 me, me, me. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. You know? And not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of God. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why as though living in the world, ye are subject to ordinances? Now, of course, this is like, you know, the traditions of man this is talking about, but think about this. In light of those who seek to heal themselves outside of God so that they can get the glory. Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men. You want to live a healthy life? Read the scripture. But Brent, the scripture just doesn't tell us how to eat. Well, you can eat anything you want nowadays. You, that's, uh, that the dietary restrictions that were under the law for the Jewish people is absolved today in 1 Timothy chapter 4. Go read it on your own time. Okay? You can eat anything. <laughs> all things are lawful for you. But not all things are expedient. Just used, did this in the previous uh, video. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure it just did where he said all things are lawful for me but not all things are expedient we just read it in this video excuse me excuse me did a video before this one okay <laughs> but um, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 1 Corinthians chapter 6 again all things are lawful for me all things are lawful unto me excuse me but all things are not expedient all things are lawful for me but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meat, meats for the belly and the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. Go back to Colossians. Verse 23. Which things have indeed a shoe of wisdom and will worship and humility and neglecting the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. To overcome an addiction, you need to go to the Lord. But most people will go to man, and it's like, here, I'll prescribe you stay away from this, stay away from that, stay away from this, stay away from that. Which things have indeed a shoe of wisdom and will worship, worshiping yourself, your own will, and humility, and neglecting of the body, not in the honor to the set, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. But see, at the end of the day, I've talked, I've known people who have overcome addiction. To I, I used to know a gal who, you know, went through the AA thing, and, you know, she has my sobriety for umpteen years. Good for you. But you listen to her testimony. It's like, and her higher power. Well, who is your higher power? That's, but it always circles around to them. They are their own higher power. 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 9 on to verse 11. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so, from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. 
ye also helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by God on our behalf. And chapter 12 in 2 Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Lord, I want not to drink anymore. I truly don't want to get drunk anymore. I don't want to drink. Lord, I don't want these cigarettes. Lord, I don't want these vapes. Lord, I don't want to look at porn. Lord, I don't want to be gluttonous. I don't want to abuse uh, acid or LSD or cocaine or even pot. I don't want them. I can't. Help me. <coughs> My grace is sufficient for that. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. Now, think about this. Your cravings. You're taking pleasure in that? In time, it's like every time I had a craving, I got down. I've known of brethren <coughs> who have had moments where they've been craving something, where they've said, yeah, the minute I had a craving, I didn't care where I was. Like when they were at the wall, laundromat, with a lot, didn't care. It's like you get down on his knees. Like, Lord, I'm craving. Please help me to endure this. Please, Lord, show me the escape. You know that devil Oscar Wilde? If you don't know who he is, good. He said the best way to get rid of a temptation is to give in to it. That's brilliant! Yeah. Yeah. No, the best way to get rid of a temptation is to seek the Lord and to seek the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. We're not going to get away from temptations, brethren. You've already figured that out. But the Lord will give us a way to bear it. When the devils, a little won't hurt. That don't worry, just, just a little. It, it, it won't count. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and necessity and in necessities and persecutions for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. For Christ's sake. You overcome, you overcome an addiction because the Lord was the one who gave you the power to do so. And then for his sake, it's like, yeah, the Lord brought me out of that addiction. There are several brethren that I know. They'll be, the Lord got me off of alcohol. Amen. Amen. It's like, I didn't even want it. The, the thing wasn't there. I truly wanted to quit. I didn't want to be a drunkard or on pills anymore. The Lord gave me the... He gave me. Hence, He gets the glory. He gets the glory. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. The answer. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Got to remember. Godly sorrow has a twofold thing. Godly sorrow is a double-edged sword, not just a straight razor. You got to remember that. Okay, godly sorrow is twofold. One to bring you on to salvation and another when you mess up to convict you. Okay, it's a two-edged sword, not a straight-edged razor. Okay, all right? 2 Corinthians 7, verses 8 and verse 10. For though I made you sorry with the letter, I do not repent. But I did repent. For I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Remember, godly sorrow is twofold. The free grace uh, Richlingites will have you to believe that godly sorrow is only onefold, a straight edge razor. No, it's a double edged sword, razor sharp. Okay? It's twofold. Now, now I rejoice. Not that ye were made sorry. 
but that ye sorrow to repentance, to edge sword. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, and all they that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Okay? For ye were made sorry after a godly manner. i got to write that down to remember that. Pick your part. That ye might receive damage by us in nothing. What damage? Having to come with the whip and chastisement. Okay? So that's one fold. Twofold. The other edge of that sword. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. Not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. Romans 6, verse 23, um, uh, verses 21 on to verse 23. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Godly sorrow has a twofold purpose. To bring you lost people onto salvation, and also for those who are saved, to convict you when you mess up. But the sorrow of the world work at death. Drink it up. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Isaiah 22? Huh? Isaiah 22? Come on. You know this. Brethren know this. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. These videos are not right now intended for the brethren. Okay? Verses 12 on verse 14. Isaiah 22. And in that day did the Lord God of hosts call to weeping and to mourning and to baldness and to girding with sackcloth. And behold, joy and gladness, slain oxen and killing sheep and e eating flesh Drinking wine, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. Live it up. This is the best we got. Live it up. Drink it up. Smoke it up. Snort it up. Shoot it up. Eat it up. Go ahead. It was, was revealed in mine ears by the Lord of hosts. Surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die, saith the Lord God of hosts. And, and the thing about smoking, I know saints that smoke. Saved, born again, lovely men, lovely sisters, but they smoke. Thankfully, every saint that I am aware of that does that, they don't be Adamic. They don't. Meaning, well... You know, they don't make excuses for it. Because I'll tell you, if you're my brother or sister and you try to make an excuse to me about an addiction, especially something that killed my mother, oh, you're going to get your ear bit off. I love you. Brother, sister, I love you. But if a, a saint, a sister or a brother who has these addictions, but making the choice not to, to get rid of it. They're like, hey, and they know that and they acknowledge that. That's between them and the Lord. That's between them and the Lord. But if I have ever, and I haven't, because if I ever encounter a saint who is knowingly doing that and makes excuses for it and justifies it, I'm going to bite your head off. And I will not be kind to you. But thankfully, those that I'm aware of, they don't do that. That doesn't make it okay. It doesn't. But see, saved people don't make excuses for themselves. They don't. We may try, but the, the Lord in us is like, Brad, But Brad, 
But look at Brad. But also, too, think about our testimony when they see you. Okay? Like when I've been at a gathering before, you know, um, like I said, I will have a glass of wine. I will. But see, the way we serve the Lord reflects Him. And when you're at a family uh, cookout or barbecue and you're walking around with a bottle, a bottle, excuse me, a glass of wine, we've looked at the scriptures. Yes, that's okay. But still, if my meat makes my brother to offend, I will eat no meat in my brother's presence. That's Brad eyes. If that's going to offend people, you know, it's like, okay, hey, I, I can go without. Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. The answer to overcoming any addiction is the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. But see, you have to truly want it. I've met people who say, I want it, I want it, I want it. I want not to do it. I want not to do it. But yet you still do it. Well, I'm powerless. Well, that's true to an extent. But if you really, really, truly wanted to be free of that, you truly wanted it. And you go to the Lord, because the Lord ain't forcing anything onto you. He will give you what is needed to overcome that in Him. But you gotta first truly want it. Acts chapter 14, verses 13 on to verse 17. Acts chapter 14, verses 13 on to verse 17. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands onto the gates, and would have done scarce and would and would have done sacrifice with the people. Which, when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people's people, crying out and saying, "Sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like." passions with you and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways nevertheless he left not he left not himself without witness and that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons filling our hearts with food and gladness. Men of like passions. Hmm? Well, how, what does this have to do with afflict, with addictions, Brad? Think about it. These people were addicted to worshiping false gods. They were their own gods. And Paul and them was like, hey, what does it say? We also are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God. These vanities. Vanities such as alcohol, tobacco, smoking, marijuana, okay, pills, you name it, snorting. And the pharmacia stuff is worse because you can go to a Jesuit pharmacy and get it legally. And this thing you got to remember. This thing you got to remember in James chapter 5, 1 verse, verse 17. James chapter 5, verse 17. Elias, Elijah, was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. 
What I want you to take away from that verse is right here. Elias, Elijah, was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed. He prayed. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. We mustn't be ignorant of the devices of the devil. Now, things that God has made for our benefit, if we use them in moderation, amen, he's for that. I'm trying to prove that to you, haven't we already proved that? It's the excess that gets it. There are some men out there who have never had a temptation ever to drink alcohol, I wish I could say that. To smoke a cigarette, I wish I could say that. To smoke marijuana, I wish I could say that. To take LSD, I wish I could say that. To take ass, uh, to take mushrooms, I wish I could say that. To do cocaine, I wish I could say that. Okay? All right? But see, that does not mean that there are other temptations there. Hmm? That doesn't mean that. Every single man of mankind, mankind, there's always something on the temptation. Always. Temptation is not going to go away. But see, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Not get away from it, because brethren, uh, if you haven't figured this out, people, you're, you're tempted all the time. And if you say, I'm never tempted, then i got to wonder, then you must be like uh, Mr. Oscar Wilde, huh? What do you mean? Well, the best way to get rid of a temptation is to give into it. And if nothing is tempting you, and it means what? You're always giving in to temptation? Well, the Lord has just sanctified me. Oh, really? So you're a little Christ, huh? You don't sin anymore? Go away. Go away. Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. We're almost done. We're almost done. Luke chapter 14, verses 25 on to verse 35. Little stupid head, Christy Burke brought this up. Lost devil. And there went great multitudes with him. And he turned and said unto them, If any man come after me, and hate not his father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And that little stupid head, Christy Burke. See, Jesus is saying to hate people when he said to love them. God first. He must increase, but I must decrease. I must love God, my Father, Jesus Christ, more than I love my wife, more than I love myself. God must be numero uno. That's what this is talking about. Okay? That's what this is talking about. He is not telling you to hate your mother, your father, your wife, or your children. No. What is he saying? He has to be number one. Yes, dear friend, Jesus Christ has to be more important to you than you yourself. Let's put this into the context of addiction. Like the Lord did with me with video games a long time ago. Video games or me? Which one? You have a choice. Well, I want both. How'd that work out for Solomon, huh? How'd, how'd I, trying to have the best of both worlds? 
How'd that work out for Solomon? Didn't work out too good, did it? See, and Satan's like, there's a gray area. There's an option C. There is no option C. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or love the other and hate the other, or other one. I just brand as that, okay? There's no gray area. There is no option C. Christ has to be number one. Is Christ number one with your addiction? Well, Brad, what? Yeah, I used to smoke cigarettes. I used to be a drunkard. I've done virtually, virtually every drug, virtually. Some of the newer ones, I don't know. But I've done virtually every drug you can think of. The Lord brought me out of these things. The Lord did. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he hath sufficient to finish it? Lest haply after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold, behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000? Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desireth conditions of peace. And that's the thing. The cost. And see, this, and this is where free grace uh, Richlandites are so deadly. Because the Lord says, Yea, and his own life also. The cost. Salvation is a free gift. It is the gift of God. But you have to die to your self-righteousness. You have to die to yourself in order for him to make you a new creature. You have to die before you can be born again. You have to be broken before you can be fixed. God's grace is free. Absolutely. Grace is his favor. Okay? And it's not that woman you're talking about. Smart Alex. Love you. No. God's grace is free. Yes. Yes, it is. But see, the cost is your self-righteousness. And for so many, especially, especially a dear man who is slobbering drunk and is still too proud of himself to get over himself and go to the Lord. That's the cost. And see, brokenness. If any man come to me and hate not his father, putting the Lord first. Okay? This crosses dispensational lines. If God is not number one in your life, then what is? You? Or that can of beer! Or that pack of cigarettes. Or that pornography. I know the devil is going to be allowed to kick me something fierce for this one. I know it. <laughs> so likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. That's, you're being legalistic. You're going to extremes. Get over yourself, Christian. You 
got to die to yourself. And when you see a man wallowing in his filth, and you look, how can you not be at an end of yourself? But, well, I drink, I lost everything, so I drink. It's, that guy's at the bottom. But yet he still has his pride. It's very sad. Who controls him? His addiction. A little doesn't hurt. Hmm? A little doesn't hurt. Right? Salt is good, unlike what a lot of doctors tell you. But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor yet for the dunghill. But men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Second Timothy chapter 2. God is the one who saves you by his grace through faith. Absolutely. But you've got to make the right choices. you got to make the right choice. You really want to quit that addiction of yours? Do you really want to? The Lord is there. But you got to get over yourself first. And let's not sugarcoat it. These addictions to alcohol, drugs, that's an addiction of self, isn't it? Well, we saw, we saw that we are to replace these addictions with good addictions, being addicted to ministering of the gospel, being addicted to reading the word, being addicted to prayer, being addicted to fellowship with the saints. Because we were designed to worship something. We were designed to worship the Lord. Yes, we were. We were designed for fellowship with Him. You shall be as gods, no good and evil. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 22 on to 26. Flee also youthful lusts. Hold your place. Ecclesiastes 11. Youth, youthful lusts. Okay? Think about this. There are so many people I love that I see destroying themselves with an addiction. It makes me sad. They've made the choice on that. And they know it. And that's between them and the Lord. But, okay. Flee also youthful lusts. Ecclesiastes 11. Verse 9. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Verse 10. Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart, and put away evil from thy flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. Back to Second Timothy. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, self-sacrifice, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart with fellow saints. What, righteous, what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What concord hath Christ with Belial? Okay, or Belial, whatever, okay? But foolish, someone who, who behaves as if they say in their heart there is no God, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. I'm not even going to say that. I, I blocked that guy. That guy's whatever, whatever. Never mind. And the servant of the Lord, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto men, apt to teach patient. Strive and patient here is not tiptoeing, striving like foolish like what is talked about in 23, but the gentle is you don't bombard them, overload them with scripture, with truth. You give them morsels. Because if you overload them, they get the mark, um, the messenger look on their face as a deer in the headlights. Okay? 
in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. A little doesn't hurt. I don't want to quit. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance through the acknowledging of the truth. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Seriously, that his name is Leo, um, who I have been encountering lately and talking to him. And I, I won't talk to him of anything of substance when he's intoxicated. And I've seen him on a couple of occasions where he was sober. Uh, and that's when it's like, you know, give him a track. It's like, dude, you're killing yourself. I know, do you want to quit? Yes. Give him a gospel, tell him about the Lord. But yet, he's not broken. He's lost everything, but yet he's not broken of that self-righteous pride. I can't. I, 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 me, me, me. And you're right, when it comes to an addiction, no, you can't. But see, you need the Lord. True, true deliverance from an addiction comes from the Lord. Otherwise, who else gets the glory but you yourself? Because I did it. It's going to be it for this little video. Thank you for watching this. If you do, uh, hopefully this might help <laughs> some of you. I hope. I hope. We need to addict ourselves unto the things of the Lord. So, got a couple of videos to upload. Thank you for your prayers. Pray for one another. We love you. See you in the next video.